Metro Blue Studios proudly presents the Midweek Mini, and here's your host, Henry Lee. Good morning and welcome to the Midweek Mini. We're halfway through the first week of the new year and it really finally feels like winter here in South Carolina. Yesterday it never even got out of the 40s and where you're at might be a lot colder. But when you go from shorts and t-shirts at Christmas to hoodies and boots all of a sudden, it kind of does something to you a little bit. So anyway, there's a couple of news stories that have been on the air this week that I want to talk about today. We're going to start with Highway I-95 in Virginia. And that's where travelers were stuck for 24 hours. Now, yesterday morning, when I first saw the story, people were beginning to run out of fuel and they had no food or water in their cars. And without fuel... They couldn't stay warm, and the conditions outside of their cars was, like, too bad for them to walk to shelter. Now, around 5 p.m. on Monday, a fast drop in snowstorm caused multiple accidents, including jackknife 18-wheelers and downed trees. One person told the New York Times that they weren't sure what to do or what was going on, so they called the police, but they were told just to hang on tight. Now, some state troopers did brave the conditions and provided help for those that they could, but, you know, there's only so much they could do, I suppose. And I guess it was just like one of those conditions that you had to wait it out, but, you know, at one point, I I think what I saw yesterday on the news, it was like, like, low teens, maybe even below that um the temperature and i can't even imagine um because last night i was um waiting on alex to get off of work and i had cut the car off because you know you can't just let it sit there and run and run and run and they were working pretty late last night and i got so cold and then i got thinking i was like this is nothing compared to what those poor people in virginia went through but anyway they have been rescued it took like Um, About 24 hours, but they were rescued. Um, Now, Virginia Governor Ralph Northam, he said that they were prepared for the couple of inches of snow that had been predicted. But more than a foot got dumped on that area. So no deaths or injuries were reported from the stalled traffic. But in other areas that was affected by that same snowstorm at least five deaths have been reported I'm not sure if that was from just the actual cold freezing of the death or if it was you know accidents or whatnot but it's really sad now in North Carolina a community is mourning the loss of one of their own and this story y'all is so heartbreaking I haven't been able to get this families like out of my mind on Monday night Trooper John Horton was on a traffic stop around 9pm his brother who is also a trooper his name is James Horton he was responding to that traffic stop as backup when he lost control of his vehicle the vehicle plowed into his brother John and the motorist that was pulled over, killing both of them. Now, Trooper John Horton was a 15-year veteran of, you know, the state troopers. Um, He's a husband and the father of six kids. The motorist that was killed has been identified as Dusty Luke Back. And this accident is still under investigation. So, you know, hopefully I'll have more on it soon. And in New Hampshire, a little girl named Harmony Montgomery has been missing for two years. But get this, she wasn't reported missing until just last week. At the time that she went missing, Harmony was only five years old. She's described as having blonde hair and blue eyes, and she's blonde in her right eye, so she should be wearing glasses. 
So how does something like this happen? And how did someone not notice that the little girl was missing? There's a lot of gaps and holes in this story, a lot of blanks to be filled in. Authorities believe that the last time Harmony was enrolled in a school, it was in Massachusetts. Now, a great uncle of Harmony's, his name is Kevin Montgomery, he said on Monday that the last time that he saw her, she appeared to be frightened. And that was back in October of 2019. Now, Montgomery says on that day, police were called when the family, who apparently lived in the same home as Kevin, had an argument. And Kevin says that he tried to push through a door when he wasn't allowed in the house, and then the police were called. Now, this caused a split in the family. Kevin says that this caused Harmony's father to stop, communi- to stop communicating with some of the family, and that included blocking him on social media. Well, after that, COVID hit, and the uncle thought that even though he hadn't heard from any of them, he thought that Harmony was okay, you know. Um, but around that time of the argument in that October of 2019, it's the last time that Harmony was seen. Well, on this past New Year's Eve, Manchester, New Hampshire police put out an alert for Harmony after learning of her disappearance. Now, Harmony's great uncle also had contacted DHHS several times because he was concerned about Harmony and he feels that this entire situation could have been avoided if the authorities had taken his concerns seriously. Now, at this time, police aren't releasing information on Harmony's parents, but an older cousin of Harmony's claimed on social media that her father, Harmony's father, had custody of her. Now, like I mentioned, there's a lot of holes and gaps in this case, but I'm going to be watching this one close because, I mean, how do you just let a child go missing for two years before you report her missing, you know? But anyway, um, when I find out more on this one, I will be getting that information to y'all. Well, I know it was a short one, but that's all I really have for today. Y'all have a good rest of your week, and don't forget to come back on Friday night for the Weather Friday.